Welcome back. Right now, we want to get you to our newest segment here on Fox 61. It is called First and Finest, and that is when we get a chance to speak with members of the Connecticut State Police Department and just to get some topics that you care about that affect you. And this morning, we are joined by Trooper First Class Christine Jeltimash. Good morning to you, Christine. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. This morning we have a variety of topics that I want to dive into, but the first one um, I believe very important right now when it comes to protecting ourselves against COVID-19. Your department was able to receive some donations when it comes to protective gear. Talk to me about that. Sure. So we have received so many donations. On Friday, we picked up 500 face shields from Sunset Technologies. We also were at Lowe's in Wallingford where we received some gloves, um, some more masks, uh, cleaning supplies, bazudos, uh, donated some cleaning supplies. We've had uh, so many anonymous donations. Uh, Litchfield Distillery, they donated gallons of hand sanitizer. Hancock Pharmacy and Meriden donated prescription bottles where those, that hand sanitizer was put into. And our training academy, the uh, medical staff there, the three individuals, they're the ones that have been going around picking up all these donations, putting together uh, training bulletins, uh, separating all this stuff, and making sure it gets out to the field. Yeah, thank you for that. And that goes into my next question with the PPEs. What is state police right now doing about making sure you guys are following the safe workplace rules and being able to do your job at the same time? Sure. So part of the state, uh, the governor's work, safe workplace guidelines rules for essential employees, uh, one of those is to provide masks to employees. So what our agency has done, we've provided masks to our troopers where they'll be wearing those whenever they're on patrol, um, on duty, whatever it might be. Um, our units will have them. Uh, if they are out in the public controlling or doing their job, they'll be wearing those masks. The only exception to that is um, when they're sitting in their cruisers and they're alone. So if somebody's transporting a prisoner or they're taking somebody off the highway, they'll have their masks on. So if you see troopers with masks on, it's not that they're sick. It's just part of the protocol that we're um, wearing those masks. Sounds good. And we here at Fox 61, one of the things we've been talking about uh, since this pandemic started is domestic violence. Right now, there is a CT coalition against domestic violence. But this morning, I just want to dive into a little bit, if we can, on what folks can do if they suspect a domestic violence situation. If I'm a bystander, what are some of those um, guidelines that you can provide for folks? So the Connecticut Coalition Against Domestic Violence, CCADV, they have Safe Connect, where an individual, whether it's a victim, a family member, a bystander, they can call in, uh, they can email, or they can chat. Um, they'll, they can get uh, resources, safety planning. Um, they're 24 hours, seven days a week uh, through the Safe Connect, which is uh, ctsafeconnect.org, or there's a phone number, 888-774-2900. And individuals can call in. Um, and with that as well, part of one of the governor's executive orders, now the Safe Connect uh, advocates can provide and help individuals uh, with when it comes to protective orders. Uh, they can prepare the narrative. They can... Um, uh, sign the applications, meet with the uh, marshals in order for these individuals to get uh, their protective orders if they need them. Now, one of the things that I had the pleasure of bringing our viewers this week was just the lovely gesture you all were able to do for healthcare workers at Connecticut Children's Medical Center. Uh, you all were able to do a drive-by along with some National Guard members. How did that come about and what was that like with you all being first responders and taking the time to thank those that are on the front lines of this pandemic? So we know that it's World uh, Health Workers Week and to show our support, uh, we know a thing or two about being on the front lines dealing with um, stuff like this. So we wanted to show our support and let the healthcare workers know that we're here for them, that we support them, we understand what they're going through. <clears throat> and what better people to do that is 
the law enforcement, state police, and the Connecticut Army National Guard. Uh, they provided two of their Army ambulances. Um, the National Guard does have a medical battalion where a lot of those individuals do work in the medical field. So we understand and we get it and we want to show our support uh, and that we're here for them. Sounds good. And just quickly before we let you go this morning, the blood drives that you all are doing at the Training Academy, when is the, when is the next one? Um, and what are some of the details of why you guys are doing that? So the next one we have is tomorrow, Monday, from 9 to 2 at the Training Academy in Meriden. Uh, we have found that a lot of blood drives were being canceled because of the location. So we reached out to the Red Cross and we said, hey, we have our training academy. Our recruits are distant learning. Uh, we have a facility. We can hold these blood drives. And we've been doing this since uh, the pandemic started um, the beginning of uh, the end of March, beginning of April. And we have found that so many people are coming out and donating blood. Uh, the Red Cross has so many protocols, wearing masks, getting uh, temperatures of the workers and the individuals coming to donate, wiping down all the equipment after each use. They have uh, strict guidelines. They're measuring chairs. They're measuring tables to ensure that everybody is staying healthy. And we really need blood. We have uh, mothers that are still giving birth, people with cancer, uh, individuals that are still involved in car accidents. So we still need to get blood out to these individuals. All right, again, that was a Trooper First Class Christine Jeltsma joining us this morning for our first and finest Trooper. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And right now we do have more news and weather. Here's Dan with